Wow, this place really moved us. It was quite an experience. And we've been to a lot of remote places already, uh, but seeing how the villagers on this island live uh, day to day uh, has been quite special. We've had probably about half the village come up to us by now uh, in their little kayaks and canoes and fishing pangas uh, wanting to trade stuff with us, which is just a sign of how difficult I think their life is on this island. Uh, it's very remote and extremely difficult to access any shops and services on the mainland. Uh, despite that though, everyone seems extremely friendly and really happy. Uh, we think that life must be very difficult because there's no obvious means of making money for these people either. Uh, there is a little bit of fishing activity, but again, even to sell their catch. The nearest town uh, is out the bay and round the corner for four hours by Panga. Uh, so it's kind of crazy. Uh, it's quite a journey to make. So if you're looking to get away from it all for a few months and you want somewhere special to come to, uh, then you could do much worse uh, than stay on this island and teach English in the local school perhaps. I think it's a really special community. There's not many places like this left in the world and uh, it was really humbling for us to witness island life here uh, for just a few days. Look what just crawled out of the lagoon. Yeah, it's one of the muddiest anchorages yet. A few problems leaving uh, at low tide, which we are at right now. The water supply to the island, this pipe is floating above the surface of the water and there's some guy in a boat waving at us. Uh, so we're gonna follow his instructions for how to get out. He's beckoning us to follow him, so that looks okay. Okay, well that wouldn't have been good <laughs> if we have gone over the supply of fresh water from the mainland. We're also leaving on a low tide, so not great timing. Well, that's a relief. We nearly destroyed the island's fresh water supply on our way out. What a goodbye gift. I don't think we'd have been the most popular visitors to the town if that happened. And uh, maybe future boaters wouldn't quite be so welcome. <laughs> What's today's fishing strategy then? <laughs> Same one as every day, I see. And I'll make an omelette. You make an omelette? Yeah. Oh, amazing. Shall I announce that on camera? Because it always comes out scrambled eggs, you know that. For sailors, of course, uh, we always complain that there are only three types of wind. Uh, too much, not enough and just the right amount from the wrong direction. And today we have just the right amount from exactly the wrong direction. <laughs> it's right on the nose and we have a whole 15 miles uh, just to motor into it. So it's not gonna be a fun sail. And we also have to think about conserving our diesel because uh, we're in uh, super remote Panama right now uh, in the West and there uh, are very few places to actually buy diesel. Uh, we also have about 270 miles ahead of us until we get to Panama City, uh, which we expect will be the next stop where we can buy it. Uh, but on a positive note, uh, the first mate has scurried off down below and I've been promised an omelette. I don't know what I've done to deserve this, uh, but with the first mate's track record for uh, egg creations, let's just see how it turns out. I can't wait. But uh, it's already lifted my spirits, as you can tell. looking really good. The wind's come round just enough. I think we can hold a course and stay uh, far enough away from the coast, but also make some progress towards Isla Catalina. Woohoo! Now I'm not needed up here. I better go down and do that promised omelette, right? That's the one thing missing from this morning. Everything's been going great so far, but who knows how this omelette's gonna shape up. Here we are. Perfect omelette as requested. Look at that, great wind and a great breakfast. These two things never come at once on Bohemia. I don't know if you've noticed, but the captain has. I'm gonna make the most of it. And I'm off to town to buy a lottery ticket as well. Flying pigs next.
Nothing. It's official. There's no fish in Panama. All gone. The boys on Boundless have gone ahead. They just anchored on Isla Catalina and we can see there's already five boats there. And I see a lot of breaking swell. So that's gonna be interesting. A, whether we can fit in and B, how rolly is it gonna be? Because we all know that Captain Sensitive here doesn't do roll. That's right. Well, here we are, settled in the lovely Isla Santa Catalina. It's a uh, surfing hotspot, so it's gonna be quite challenging to get to shore. But from here, at least, it looks great. We're looking on the crashing surf on every side of us, and we've managed to just find a little snug bit of uh, secure anchorage behind this island here. Uh, so let's see what the night brings. Finally, Peter's had some success with the fishing. It's official. There's no fish in Panama. All gone. He's found a successful fishing boat and flagged them down <laughs> to buy their fish. <laughs> They've also offered to give us a ride to the local town so we can go check it out because the surf will be way too much for our little dinghy. Now this is what I call an Uber. Okay, getting out is gonna be interesting. <laughs> Adding you wouldn't manage, that's for sure. <laughs> nice to see the experts do it for a change. No offense, Bam. <laughs> and apparently there's a pizza restaurant, so that's on the agenda. Yes. Okay, pizza is out, it's all about burgers. Well, goodbye to Isla Catalina. It was a lovely anchorage in the end, uh, despite the captain's fears when he first arrived and saw all the swell breaking over this reef on both sides of the island and coming straight into the anchorage. Most of that dissipated uh, after the high tide went away. Uh, now though, onwards to the next destination. We're taking the opportunity, while there's still some wind, uh, we're gonna visit the next anchorage, which is on the edge of a banana plantation, I hear. So banana splits coming right up. I better get on with that whipped cream then. Let's hope that this passage is going to be very rolly to help me with it. Well, this is a good sign. We are only two minutes away from the anchorage and both cells are up. The engine is off, so Captain will be happy. That's right. Captain's happy whenever the engine's off and the sails are out. And today he's delighted. Only 10 minutes out of the anchorage as well. And he may get banana split later. What a day. If he plays his cards right. Look, I can see you doing lots of pointy with your camera, but we're having lunch, enjoying our ride. <laughs> see what I mean? They have a complex that we are faster. Look at them. They get in their excuses before we can even put any commentary to the fact that they've just been overtaken. It's so easy. It's just so easy. Boundless, boundless. Yeah, there was a bit of pointing of the camera, but we'll just let the footage speak for itself. There's nothing to be said, really. Well, I will be getting my uh, GoPro out and taking bits of our lovely burritos and our beers. <laughs> Enjoy your lunch. Doesn't matter that they are slower than us. I mean, who cares? I've been concentrating extra hard on my sail trim because we're sailing so close together. And there was a period, conveniently not on camera, that they were just inching past us. Soon put a stop to that. Well, you know, you either got it or you don't. Enjoy your sandwiches. Well, that was priceless. I was just about to diss them and say how slow they are when Julian came on the radio. Look at that smile on his face, huh? I'm trying my best to hide it. <laughs> Try harder! <laughs> Let me tell you, it's always competition. When two boats get together, friends, no friends, family members, the gloves are off. And there's no guarantees on which boat between the two of us is going to be the faster one. It's down to like inches of adjustment on the sail trim. So uh, Captain's hard work paid off this time. 
where we took our eyes off them for a moment and they just zoomed up behind us out of nowhere and even took the windward position. I don't know how that could possibly happen without a bit of diesel assistance. So we both decided we'd done quite enough filming of this race. We already claimed victory over there. So don't really want to come back to it and dwell on it too much, especially not now we're being overtaken. Yeah, no one's interested. Cat! Yay, we won! Victory Bohemia! Well, it's now later. We enjoyed the lunch, we had a beer. Meanwhile on Bohemia, I think they suspended the lunch service. The captain had that poor crew member doing all things, the sorts of things he was never designed to do. And I think we're kind of back where we started. In fact, I think we're overtaking a little bit. Yeah, we're definitely ahead now. Bless them. You gotta feel sorry for them a bit, don't you? No, we are not racing anymore. Strangely, they caught up. I think a little diesel was being used for sure. But you know, it doesn't count now. The race is off. We done. The race is off. We're just about to enter the upwind thing. Uh oh, heading straight into the storm. The anchorage is only five miles away, so let's hope we make it in time. Now it's a race against the storm. Three miles to go and it's already starting to spit. The last three miles are turning into a sporty sail. 7.5 knots now. Can anyone hear a humming? This is how they overtake us. Diesel power. Not a sail in sight. Apart from on Bohemia, of course. I hope you are proud of yourself, boys. As the Iron Genoa. Choking on those diesel fumes back here. Do you mind? Okay, hover a good stack. I'm gonna rip that windlass out one day. Let me tell you that. It jammed again. We really need to change this snubber situation because there's just twists everywhere. It just happens so often, it's crazy. It's crazy, I'm now using the winch handle to hold the chain to get the twists out of it before it goes through the windlass. I need to send a formal complaint to the captain. Well, we're in and we made it just in time before the rainstorm hits. Hopefully it's not going to be too heavy, but we have been hearing the crack of thunder uh, the last two hours of this sail. So let's see what happens. There's always some drama on Bohemia and today it was the windless. I do hear that the captain's about to receive a formal letter of complaint. So let's see how that goes. And uh, let's hope that the first mate's banana split lives up to expectations or there'll be complaint letters all around. I don't think so. With his performance, he's more on a track for a split separation station. I'm ready to walk off anytime now. But first I need to learn how to walk on water. <laughs> I hear it's been done before, so you know. Well he's already covered making it into wine, so why not? Go for the full set. That's it, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Got a lot today. <laughs> As we say on Bohemia, one step at a time. Oh there's a lot of carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Wait! <laughs> And off we go, into a bright new future. <laughs> Don't leave me! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> It's raining, you know, so we didn't feel like going out. So instead, we invited Bandlers over. We've come for our victory dinner. <laughs> you guys tried very hard today. I thought you did very well. We're very proud of your record. Oh, it's the victory dinner they came to claim. <laughs> the boys are very generous today. Not only they made bread, they also brought another box of wine. <laughs> only the best. That's a good one. Cloth. <laughs> <laughs> Those. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Sailing Bohemia's first ever game night! Yeah, no one's interested. Cat! Yay, 
have we won? No, we are not racing anymore. Enjoy your sandwiches. Special thanks in this episode go to Justin and Paula from Southern California for sending us a delicious case of rum on PayPal. Champagne for everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much and here's to you. If you enjoyed this episode, then please don't forget to tell YouTube all about it by commenting, liking and sharing. See you next time.